Spark 5 Pro, here are the numbers. A 6.6 inch 720p LCD display with an 83.7% screen to body ratio. 4GB of RAM running on the Helio A22 chipset from MediaTek with Android 10. 5000 mAh of battery, a quad camera setup with the main shooter being a 16 megapixel lens, iOS 6.0 and a phone that supports network speeds of up to 4G. While I was writing down the review, I thought to myself, what's the point of the Spark series? For example, the Pavoya series is a battery focused you know, series. So what's the Spark's deal? And here are my thoughts. Oh, and a sub to the channel would be great. We're trying to hit 500 before the end of the year. So please drop a like and subscribe. But let's continue. Okay, so the display. It's a 720p LCD display. And yeah, there are really two ways that you could look at it. Either one, I wish we had a high resolution screen or you know an OLED display. Or two, it's not bad. Like if you're looking at this phone on its own, you will think, oh, that's a really good display. But then if you compare it to something of a high resolution or OLED, then you would notice that, oh, it's actually a worse display. So really on a general note, it's okay. It could have been better, but it's okay. What helps though is the fact that it's a 6.6 inch display. So that means it's huge enough, you know, to make you enjoy watching content on it. Playing games, we always appreciate a wider display. So that's good. Now, are there problems with the display? Well, really, I had only two problems. One is that screen to body ratio. Yes, it sounds high, but the chin on this smartphone is immense. Like, I wish that Techno could reduce the amount of bezels at the bottom of their smartphones. Also, brightness is not the best. It goes up up to 480 nits, but outside it's barely visible. But on a general note, I would say it's probably a 7 out of 10. The display is like a 7 out of 10. Next would be performance. According to Techno, multitasking and gaming have become faster and smoother. It's running MediaTek's A22 chipset, which is a budget chipset. So you can't technically expect flagship performance on this device, and that's not what you're going to get. But if you're doing the things that this phone is built for, it would be fine. And by that, I mean simple stuff like opening of apps and you know, switching between apps that are not too intensive. But generally, for that price point, or for its price point, it seems okay. One thing to note as well is that it runs Android 10. And the downside to that is that it would not be getting any other software updates. So as it comes with Android 10, it's going to die with Android 10, sadly. Battery. Now that is where things start to look up a bit. It has a 5,000 mAh battery. And when you couple that with Techno's smart power saving system, you should easily last an entire day. The only downside to that is there is no form of faster charging. So, you know. Yeah, but generally I would say battery on this device is fantastic, an 8 out of 10. Okay, now cameras. Um, yeah, it has a quad camera setup, a 16 megapixel main lens, a 2 megapixel macro, a 2 megapixel depth sensor, and a QVGA lens. Now I'm going to say this every single time. I would rather take one very good camera or one okay camera. Yeah. You can't have a 60 megapixel main lens and then have a two megapixel depth sensor or a two megapixel macro lens or even worse, a QVGA lens. It's so obvious to everyone that they really just added those other three cameras just so they can say it's a quad camera setup. But yeah, I'm curious. Let me know what you think in the comments would you rather have one good camera or four cameras where really three are, you know, useless? Just let me know in the comments down below. But to focus on that main lens, that main 16 megapixel sensor, it's pretty good actually. I was surprised by that particular wine shot I took. It was really good. 
you know, surprisingly, it was actually really good. It just shows that there's promise in the camera department for these more affordable phones. So I just wish Techno could spend their time and resources on fixing and perfecting that main lens, you know, and ignoring the other two megapixel guys. But I don't know, that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments uh, down below. I would say for the camera department, it's, it's probably like a seven as well. Seven, yeah, kind of like a seven out of 10 for the cameras. The last thing then to talk about would be the design. And it's plastic at the back, but you shouldn't be shocked because of the price of this smartphone. But yeah, it's pretty okay. I love the gradient finish at the back of the phone. I also love that it's a matte finish, so it doesn't reflect as much, but it does show a lot of fingerprints. So, you know, I mean, it comes with a rubber TPU case, but you really, you know, should get a proper case, I, I would say. But yeah, all around, it's actually pretty well designed. The only thing I could say is that they all seem too familiar, but different finishes at the back. I kind of like this one. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. So that really is the Spark 5 Pro. To sum it all up, it's a phone that tries to give you value. Like it tries to be okay at every single thing. It's supposed to kind of mirror what you would get from their flagships, but at like a way cheaper price. So if you can't afford the flagships, the Canon and the, the Canon, then yeah, the Spark is kind of your way to go. So who are those to buy this phone? It's simply those who want that Canon experience, but just can't afford it. The Spark is definitely what you should get.